By subscribing today, you get the Fisherman Magazine every week, the chance to enter the Dreamboat Challenge, and unlock the great features of the new Fisherman website. I started here um, one afternoon with my brother-in-law, and this is where the, the, the harbor in Nantucket. We decided that we were going to end up fishing over here, which is, which is called the Bonita Bar. It's a sandbar. goes about two miles off the southern end of Nantucket. Um, got into the sound. This is Nantucket Sound here. This is the Atlantic Ocean on this side. And we were going to go out fishing for Bonita. The Bonita are small tuna. And the month of August, you can tell, um, when you go out to the Bonita Bar, there's always lots of boats because everybody's fishing for the same thing. So we started out into the sound. It was blowing pretty strong, 15, 20 knots, and we were getting pretty beat up. Um, in fact, I got a phone call and couldn't even answer the phone call. We were getting pounded so hard. We said, you know what, let's go out into the ocean. Maybe it'll be on the lee side. You know, you never know. You, know what the, you don't know what the fishing's gonna be like. So we got through the inlet, got into the ocean side, and it really wasn't any better. Um, but when you're out on a sandbar with the wind coming in, you get a lot of rollers, you get a lot of waves. And the way you, way you fish for Bonita um, is basically you anchor your boat, put the bow into the waves, and then you fish off the stern. They're very skittish fish. Um, supposed to turn the engines off. But it was so crazy that day, I said to Rich, you fish off the stern, I'm gonna keep the boat under power, just slightly under power with the nose in the waves, and we'll just go from there. So um, we fished for maybe a half an hour, and every once in a while I'd say, okay, Rich, stop fishing, hold on to the sides, because we gotta ride up a big one and down, up and down. You know, it was sort of, you know, sort of it was unique. It was, we're having sort of a, a, a good time doing it. And the boat, this boat right here, the Queen Bee is a regulator boat, and they're known for being extro extremely solid fishing boats. So um, we did that for maybe half an hour. We caught nothing. And by the way, I don't know if I also told you that there were no other boats out there. So that gave you an indication that everybody else was a lot smarter than the two of us. But we were, ha you know, sort of having fun. So I fished for a little while. Rich says, come on, let's go in. We're getting beat up. So Rich, I'm in the back, in the stern, um, in the stern, cleaning up. And Rich looks over his right shoulder to go back into the inlet. And all of a sudden he says, holy mackerel. And I look out the left side of the boat and I see a wall of water and a wave breaking over top of the bimini top. So it's cresting over the top. And I just said, that's it. I know we're going in. So we're gonna get wet here. The two thoughts I said, um, I hope the boat's not over me when I come up and I hope the water's not too cold. Those are my last thoughts before getting thrown, get, getting thrown in. So sure enough, the boat was not over me. So thank goodness for that. And the water wasn't that cold. So thank goodness for that. So I woke, came up, popped up and said, oh, gee, this maybe isn't so bad. My brother-in-law is maybe 20 or 30 yards away from me. And he looks at me and just says, I don't have a good feeling about this. I don't think I'm going to make it. And, uh, you know, at that point, I don't like to tread water. I'm, I don't like to float on my back, but I knew one thing was extra, you know, very, very clear to me, extraordinarily clear, is if I was going to make it, or if we were going to make it, and anybody was going to save anybody, it was going to be me going in. And so I said to Rich, I said, listen, I'm going to start swimming, you follow me in, and let's just go from here. And uh, what I did was, um, this being, you know, being out here, this being the inlet, I am said, I'm going to hang, I'm not going towards the inlet because of the currents, I'm going to head off in this direction. Um, which is a little bit further away, but I just said, I am, you know, I'm not taking chances going that way. That's death for sure. Um, so I started swimming, and when, once you start swimming, you've got all my clothes on, you know, and you start swimming, you have to take your clothes off. Every time you take your so clothes off, you start to sink. <laughs> it's like, oh, this isn't a good thing. You're trying to get your shoes off, your pants off, your shirt off. Everything's got to come off except, you know, my swim, swimming trunks. And, uh, you know, just, just keep going. Um, I had no idea Rich was behind me. There were three things that came out of the boat, which was really honestly a miracle. Myself, my brother-in-law, and a bag. And it was like a, like a survival bag. The survival bag had a Mustang um, life preserver. And by the way, we had no life preservers on. Not being the smartest guys in the world, we had no life preservers on. So we're in the water just by ourselves. So at this point right now, you know, maybe I'm halfway in. Um, you know, and the thought, the thought struck, you know, you get, get hit with, oh my gosh, you're gonna, you know, am, am I gonna make it? And the beach just, you know, you're swimming for, I don't know, a half hour, and it's, the beach isn't getting any closer. So it's just like, you know, maybe this is not gonna, you know, maybe this is my time. So I, you know, said to myself, hey, listen, I'm not making any deals, you know, we're, we're just, I'm just gonna keep going. So kept going, swam in, and I was probably, 
I'm gonna say 30 or 40 yards off the beach. At this point now, I can hear the waves, I can see the beach, I can almost feel the sun on the beach. I mean, it's really, you know, it's really, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there. And, and this thought just hits me that that's it, I am done. I can't go a stroke, not a stroke further. And, and, and it strikes you, you know, I'm starting to laugh at this point saying, hey, listen, I'm 30 yards off the beach, I'm gonna die. This is, you know, and it's how ironic is this to have made it all this distance and not, uh, you know, not survive. But anyway, you just, you know, you do what you have to do because you don't, you know, you don't have, um, you don't have any other choice of that. You know, it's either die or, or you know, go the last couple, wet, last couple strokes. Get on the beach, um, walk around the point. There happened to be a cottage. This actually has to be an island off of the end of Nantucket. One cottage there, I see a bunch of heads through the window. This cottage has no electricity, no running water. It's just several people in there. Bang on the door and say, there's been a terrible accident. My brother-in-law's in the ocean. I have to, you know, I need a phone. I need something. And a, and a cell phone comes through the screen door and the door slams. Um, just because, you know, they did not expect to see somebody like that, you know, at the back door. So, make a long story short, I start making phone calls. I'm calling my wife. I'm calling the Coast Guard, everything. And they kind of get it. And they come out, get blankets around me. Half hour later, half hour later, the, the gentleman, the, you know, the guy who was living in the house, says, who's walking down the beach? And sure enough, it's my brother-in-law. And he had survived because he was on that bag. My brother-in-law had had open-heart surgery the year before. So his upper body was shot, his lower level, lower body was fine. So he kicked. He just sat on the top of the bag, floated on top of the waves, and he kicked his way, kicked his way in. And you know, it's sort of the, the you know, the, 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 at least the end of the human part of the story. And the, the real interesting part of the story was this time last year, um, it's one evening, my wife gets a phone call. I'm upstairs, she's downstairs. And I hear all sorts of yelling. My kids happen to be open for dinner and there's just yelling and kids are hooting and hollering. And they're all in their 20s and 30s. So um, basically they're yelling, the boat, the boat, the boat. So what had happened was the Commodore of the Coast Guard in, in, in Boston called my wife and said, um, hey, we've just gotten a call from the Spanish Navy and we found your boat and it's off the coast of Spain. And that's where everybody was yelling about, like, oh what? God. You know. And he said, this is sort of a heads up call for you because you could get, this could get picked up in the media and you might start getting some phone calls. And sure enough, we had CBS, NBC, ABC. We were on the Today Show. I mean, it just went on for weeks about the story of the boat. And what, you know, the story is, yeah, lucky, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, the story is, you know, it's one of two stories, really, was what makes it cool is, you know, the human part is interesting. We're very lucky and we know it and we're very exceedingly grateful. But the story is really interesting, is the interesting story about the boat. And, you know, what did this boat do for three and a half years, six hurricanes, you know, the sights that it saw, the, you know, the boats, the, you know, the icebergs, the continents that it saw. So, you know, that, uh, you know, that's pretty much the story. It, you know, the story does, it, it's amazing. This is a year ago now, and this story is still alive. This is the second boat show that this has been to. People are fascinated, not so much by us, really fascinated by the boat and the condition the boat's in. The boat's in amazing shape. In the spring of 2005, I decided that I wanted to upgrade my 23-foot regulator to a 26 because I wanted a larger boat um, because my kids were getting a little bit older and I wanted my boys to take a two-engine boat out in the Atlantic. So I had the 23-foot, 23 loved it, had a lot of fun fishing in it, but I said it decided it was time for a 26, a little bit of an upgrade. Um, and we had the boat for three years. Um, we did everything in this boat. We had family picnics at this boat. I fished almost nine months out of the year in the boat. Um, we just, you know, went everywhere in it. We just was part of our family. In fact, my kids were here yesterday, and they'd seen it for the first time since the accident. So, um, you know, they were all, you know, they were all very interested to see the boat. But I can't speak highly enough. In terms of regulator, I, you know, in terms of the company, the people, you know, Joan and Owen, you know, the owners of, 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 of Regulator, it's, um, it, it, it's, it truly is an amazing organization, which makes absolutely amazing, amazing boats.